So you're a dog trainer and the phone rings and, and it's, a, it's a client on the phone or a potential client anyway. Um, quick sneak, sneak peek fact, we call all of you clients, whether, whether you've paid us, whether you hire us or not, we, we, we call all of you clients. Some, some of us though, we call you students. Some of us consider ourselves more like teachers and some of us think of ourselves more as uh, uh, service providers. But at any rate, um, I, I call my clients clients and, uh, and I wanna help every single one of you uh, get the best value for your money and enjoy the best relationship with your dog that you possibly can. But I could tell you that uh, most dog trainers, we're going to judge you if the first question that you have for us is, gee, what is your dog training method? Tell me about your methods. Because if you're asking about our methods before you're bonding with us and before you're telling us anything about your dog, we're going to assume that you have been preloaded by um, the politically correct nonsense on the internet about avoiding any form of dog training that isn't completely based on cookies and completely based on all positive reinforcement. And if that's you, um, then let's talk about this for a real quick second. And let me make the case. The internet is ridiculous. You have to be very careful what information that you pull off of and swallow on the internet. You do not want, trust me, you do not want all positive based reinforcement dog training. You just don't want it. And just as a little proof that the internet is nuts, go to flatearthsociety.org and you're gonna come across a couple hundred thousand people who are convinced, utterly convinced that the world is flat and uh, Columbus sailed off the edge and the moon landing was uh, you know, shot in a studio somewhere in Disney, okay? These are the same people think Roy Disney's head is frozen someplace. All, any decent dog trainer, any good dog trainer, virtually every dog trainer, frankly, I've ever met uses what can be called positive reinforcement. And that is to reinforce in a positive way moments that you like things that you want the dog to remember that they are good. So for example, every time I ask a dog to sit and he does, and I tell him, good boy, that's positive reinforcement. I'm adding a reward. In the, in, in the case of praise, it's an emotional content reward. Or if I use a, a treat or a piece of food and I reward that sit, good sit, and then I deliver the piece of food, that's positive reinforcement. So I've never met a dog trainer who doesn't use it. The issue is when, when certain dog trainers are writing on the internet about positive reinforcement, um, that only use positive reinforcement me you know, me methodology, be sure you only get positive reinforcement. What they are suggesting is, is that there is nothing other than the ability on the part of the trainer to reward behavior that, that you like. That there should never be a correction. Uh, listen, I don't know about you, but I've been corrected lots of times in my life, okay? My mother corrected me. Uh, the occasional police officer corrected me if I was going five miles an hour or too, too quick over the limit. The occasional teacher. All this means is that we receive some consequence for doing it wrong. But for that to be fair, you have to be educated first. I mean, they, they give you the rules of the road and, and they run you through a test before they give you a driver's license because then it's fair to hold you accountable to the rules. So I think it's very important that we educate our dogs in a very compassionate and humane way, but there's nothing wrong with using a little bit of authority to show a dog, look, yes, I'm gonna give you a cookie when you come and sit, but if you're eating the pot roast off my counter, something else is gonna happen and it's not gonna involve a cookie. So, and, and in fact, if you look at positive reinforcement dog training, quote, all positive reinforcement dog training, it says that there should never be a negative message delivered from the dog trainer, or for that matter, the dog owner to the dog. And that's crazy, that's nonsense. For example, their solution to jumping is that you should simply wait it out, um, turn your back, um, just fail to reward the dog with any attention until the dog stops jumping and then you can praise the dog. I, almost anybody who's ever come to me as a client has realized that when you turn your back on the jumping dog, that just represents a bigger challenge. So now you have a dog climbing up your back, ripping your clothes, making you bleed. Uh, there are any number of dogs who just step it up to that level. In fact, more dogs will do that than will quit jumping. They just view it as a challenge, a challenge. Let's go for this. So um, yeah, I would rather interrupt training with a command to sit and then reward for the sit. But I have no problem stepping into the dog space or giving a small leash correction for jumping because it helps to clarify for the dog very, very quickly, listen, this is unacceptable behavior 
And this is behavior that's going to get you rewarded. So pick. What do you want to do here, buddy? Anyway, I just wanted to address it real quick. When you call a dog trainer, ultimately, of course, you're going to have to talk about methodology. But if your first question is, what are your methods? Uh, that dog trainer is going to be pretty sure that you have been preloaded with a certain kind of internet poison. I think when you call a dog trainer, the best thing you can do is to say, look, let me tell you a little bit about me. Let me tell you a little bit about my dog. Ask any questions that you like, and then please tell me how you can help me and give me some detail about that. And I think every dog trainer uh, who you call, who you talk to, should be willing to answer any level of question. But tell us a little bit about yourself and have an open mind. It is very important that you as the consumer have a good relationship with your dog trainer and that you find a bond of trust. Very critical. So I, of course, ultimately, you need to know everything about what a dog trainer proposes that you do with your dog or, or how they're gonna teach your dog. That's important and I stand by it. But be aware that you're being sold a little bit of a bill of goods by a certain type of dog trainer who says all training must be all positive. I've never run into a school that didn't have some kind of penalty for the kids if they do it wrong. If it's stand in a corner or a small scolding or you know everybody else is getting a cupcake right now, little Johnny, but you pulled Mary Ann's hair so you're not getting a cupcake. Um, there is always in human interaction some form of slight negative consequence for doing it wrong and that motivates us to do it right, especially a good dog trainer. Um, is going to provide lots of motivation, lots of education, lots of compassion, lots of reward. That, that should be part of every dog trainer's philosophy. And frankly, if it's not, you don't, you don't want that dog trainer. But you don't want the other extreme either. The person who has a bag of cookies and just runs out of options when the dog is eating off the counter or chasing the squirrel. You don't want the guy going to beat up your dog either. Somewhere right in the middle. That kind of trainer, we call ourselves balanced trainers. We're, we're right in the middle. We've got exactly the right kind of humane correction if your dog says, yeah, I understand what you're trying to tell me, but not gonna do it. Um, and we have the exact right brand of treat and praise to encourage the correct behavior. That way you wind up with a well-trained dog. Anyway, these are just a few of my thoughts. I'm Mark Gold, 